Hey everybody, it's Robert Fedora here. Welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. Have you ever wondered why there's no launch scheduled job in Flow Designer? Sure, you could argue that with the scheduled trigger condition, Flow Designer can actually be its own scheduled job. And you can argue that most of the time, scheduled jobs already have all the conditions that they need. But I just love the idea of Flow Designer being an orchestrator for any kind of logical object activity across the entire platform. Like maybe I have scheduled reports or audits that I gotta run periodically, but maybe I have some kind of condition or circumstance that makes me wanna run those things earlier. And I'd love to be able to integrate those into Flow. And in the case where a scheduled job might have scripted conditions, Flow Designer's condition builder is just way better, like a lot better. And if nothing else, building a Flow action for run scheduled jobs just gives us some practice using Flow Designer. Here I am in Flow Designer. I'm going to go create new action. We're going to call this run scheduled job go. I've already built one for practice, so it has the same internal name. So we're going to submit. First thing we need to do is create an input because we have to ask them what scheduled job they want to run. Create input. Let's call this one job. And this is going to be a reference to the scheduled job table. So schedule job sysauto. Next thing we're gonna do is we need to put a step into our script action. It's gonna hit this plus sign. Then we get service now as a step picker and we are going to run a script. There we are. Now, just like always, the script has its own input variable. So we are just gonna simply name an input variable and make it equal to the input value from our main flow. If you're ever a little confused by this, I have a video that I did explaining the difference between input variables from the flow and the script. It's gonna be popping up in the corner right about now. Give that a look-see. Just do it! So we are going to create a variable. We are gonna call this script job. And we are gonna make it equal to the input variable of job. So that's gonna be a reference to the scheduled job table. Now it is time to code. <laughs> So if you've been around the block a bit, you'll know that there's something you can call called SNC trigger synchronizer. And what it'll do is it will actually run your scheduled job from script, but it needs the parameter of knowing exactly what it is going to fire. Now you could say, let's just take inputs.script job, but that's not good enough. You see every scheduled job is stored in a scheduled job table, but as we know, when we create a new scheduled job, it asks us what type of scheduled job, because we can generate a report, we can generate a record, or we can run a script. And each of those things is actually stored in their own table as well. And therefore to get SNC trigger synchronizer to work, we have to find out the actual table that those things are stored in. We ask it for the reference to the scheduled job. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called job class and job class, the goal here is to find the exact table name of the record from script job. Remember, everything is stored in sysauto if it's a scheduled job, but each of the scheduled jobs has their own table. And so we are going to find that table name and we're gonna store it as job class. Why are we doing this? because the SNC trigger synchronizer needs to know the exact table. It can't just be sysauto. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called true lookup. And what true lookup is gonna do is it's gonna go look at the table that we just discovered and it's gonna find the record of the script job. So the idea here is at the very start, we asked, hey, what scheduled job are you wanting to run? We picked a scheduled job from the sys auto table, right? Now we're finding the precise table that the scheduled job is stored in. We're gonna query that table for the record with the same sys ID, that is the script job. So here we are with the variable of true lookup it is going to be a new glide record using the job class that we just found out a second ago. Now what we're gonna do is see if anything returned. So we're gonna say if, true lookup, which is that glide record, dot get. And what are we going to try and get? We're going to try and get inputs dot script job, which is originally when we asked the person, hey, what scheduled job are you running? 
if we look up the sys ID of that job in the job class table that we just discovered, that should return a result. But I like to make safe queries. You like to make safe queries too, right? Right? And so we gotta verify that it returns something. And if it does return something, we're gonna do outputs dot pass fail equals pass. Now what's outputs dot pass fail? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our output variables and we're gonna make one called pass fail. It's just gonna be a string. What this is gonna allow us to do is on the off chance that nothing does return, then we can react in our flow to that failure. So we're gonna make outputs.passfail equal to a pass. Then we are going to trigger the SNC trigger synchronizer, but what are we gonna put in this parameter? Well, we know it needs to have a record in the exact type of scheduled job table that is going to trigger. So we're going to put our true lookup. And that was a glide record to the precise table with the record that we originally asked for. And so what happens if the true lookup doesn't return anything? Well, we just have a else statement and that puts our outputs.passfail equal to fail. So if it's exceeded, it should set our outputs to pass and it should actually trigger the scheduled job. Now, because we have these output variables, those are just output variables to the script step. We wanna transfer those into the main outputs of the actual flow. So let's go to the outputs. Let's create an output, pass fail, final pass fail. And it's gonna be a string, it's gonna be mandatory. Now we're gonna exit the edit mode. And here we have a uh, final pass fail. And we're gonna set that to the pass fail from our script step. Let's go ahead and test it. Let's run a report, a scheduled report I have called a weekly batch audit. Let's run the test. This is a scheduled report that sends an email. So what I'm gonna do is go to my sys email table and I can see that just now we fired the weekly batch audit to Robert Fedora at gmail.com. Nice. How about a scheduled record creation? I have a scheduled record creator called make me an incident. Let's run that test. And then let's go to our incident table and let's go to our incident table. And we see that just now a major incident causing serious interruption of business activity has been created. Okay, what about scheduled scripts? And I have a scheduled script called log that it worked. All it does is just gonna put something in the system log. I'm gonna run that test. I'm gonna go to the logs table and we see that just now we get the message it worked. So there you have it folks. Very simple few lines of code and now you can run scheduled jobs from your flow designer. Hope you found some wisdom in there and I will see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedorik now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the emailed picture here.